Welcome to Upside Down Pencils Podcast, featuring Jesse Jimenez and Tommy Kimcham, covering everything New England, from fashion, sports, dining, and nightlife entertainment, to community, small business, and education. Make sure to follow them on Twitter at Inspired Pencil, and to visit their website at UpsideDownPencil.com for the latest news, updates, and upcoming events. Hi guys, this is your boy Jess from Upside Down Pencil. I'm um, very happy for you guys to listen in. I really appreciate all the support. Um, let's just dive right into it. Let's talk some Bruins. Um, obviously, the Bruins uh, missed out on a couple of key players uh, in free agency. You had uh, Ilya Kovalchuk, who's coming back from the KHL, ended up signing with the uh, LA Kings. There was no way the Bruins were going to go three years with him. I think they were more than willing to do the six million or six and a half, whichever the one uh, final number he ended up with uh, with LA. But they were not going that third year with them. Um, so I, I don't think you can blame Sweeney for that one. I think that has to do with a lot of cap management. They have a lot of young players that are going to be up in the next couple of years. And, um, you know, I think they made the right decision to kind of stick to their guns and kind of hold firm on their offer to, to Kovalchuk. Um, the other big fish, obviously, was uh, John Tavares. Um, they went through the whole ordeal of um, paying him a visit out in California. Um, they they had a meeting with him. And it went well. Unfortunately, things didn't go their way. Uh, he ended up signing um, with the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, his hometown team. Um, not not disappointed of, about that at all. I mean. You're a young player, you're a free agent, you get to make the, the your choices, right? Um, it's part of the deal, and there's no reason to be upset or, you know, hang your head if you're a Boston Bruins fan. Um, I think you should be proud of the fact that a player of his caliber is looking at the Bruins and saying, wow, this is a team that I can see myself with for the next, you know, eight, nine, ten years and, you know, be successful. I think they, they're... They're a great organization. They're going in the right direction. So I think that speaks volume of what Don Sweeney and Cam Neely have developed um, in Boston over the last three to four years and the development of young players. Um, I know they've had a couple of hiccups here and there with a few trades. You know, you had Ronaldo for a third-round pick. You had, um, I believe it was Connolly for two second-round picks. Um, you know, it's, it's little things like that that kind of, leave fans a little bit sour um but he's done great with the development i think he's getting much much better at just being a general gm in terms of you know how to manage the cap how to manage players how to manage the roster i think he's done a fantastic job over the last couple of years especially the way he's locked up patrice bergeron and and brad marchand i mean those two deals are probably the two biggest steals in the nhl um if not top five for sure um I mean, you have other players that make, you know, making 10, 10 and a half. I mean, you see Tabes and, and Kane out in Chicago and, you know, they're making 20. And then you got Pasternak, Marshawn and Bergeron making about 19. Um, that's incredible cap management by Don Sweeney. And um, you have to give credit to him. But the biggest thing here is uh, it's the, what's the fallout? I mean, what's the end game for the Bruins now? Now that Tavares is um, in Toronto and Kovalchuk is in L.A. And uh, with the going on rumors of Tampa Bay being heavily on uh, Eric Carson from, uh, from Ottawa. Um, he's an elite defenseman. Um, I would say he's top three player in the NHL as is right now. He's, he's about 28 years old, um, writing his prime. I think he's 29, actually, uh, right in his prime and um, probably has a good six, seven years left in his career where he's going to be putting up numbers. Uh, you know, he's a former Norris uh, winner. He's he's a game changer for any franchise that that's able to trade for him. It's going to come with a heavy price. I mean, you hear names like, you know, Sergachev or, you know, Radish, um, you know, Brandon Point. Uh, names like that coming out of Tampa Bay and you kind of take, <laughs> take a step back if you're a Bruins fan and kind of take a look at your own roster, your own uh, prospect pool and kind of try to pick out the comparables there. And then you're talking about an Andres Bjork or, you know, or a Jake DeBrusque or um, players like that. And, you know, even a Charlie McAvoy, uh, 
I mean, you look in the mirror and you have to be, you have to honestly tell yourself, I mean, is this really worth going for? And I think, uh, first of all, I don't think Carlson makes any sense for the Bruins. Being a right shot, um, same position as uh, McAvoy, and I think McAvoy is your defenseman of the future. I'm not saying he's as good as um, Carlson, but he has a tremendous ceiling and he's already exceeding expectations in my mind. Um, being a two-way defenseman and he's only going to get better um, over the next couple of years and he can be a top three player I think Uh, so just stick to your guns um, keep the development going keep that trajectory going up uh, with McAvoy and kind of ride the wave Um, no need to spend your assets on on a player that uh, sure can help you but uh, you're depleting your what you've built and it's better to kind of keep those bullets in uh, in the chamber uh, for something bigger if something bigger comes along. Which also brings me to um, their top six. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things going on, um, whether you know you go internal or you look outside. Again, uh, one of the biggest names that you keep hearing out there is our Tim Panarin uh, from Columbus. He's in the last year of his deal. Um, he has expressed... Um, through his team and his agent that uh, he prefers being in the East. Um, not sure why. I haven't heard a lot of details on the reason why. Um, but, you know, players have their choices when they become free agents and it's their will, just like Tavares, right? Just like Kovalchuk, any free agent. And uh, you mean you can knock the guy for kind of taking advantage of the opportunity to kind of make their own decision or where they want to play for the, you know, next six, seven, eight, years of their career um but it uh, recently they he had a meeting with uh um his gm and uh, his agent in france um apparently that meeting took about 45 minutes i, I kind of chuckled at that uh you know and kind of tweeted out saying that it takes 10 to 15 minutes just to drink a coffee and sit down and start the conversation so that leaves you for about 30 minutes to discuss you know numbers and terms and situations and you know, what's going on with the roster, what direction the team is going to go. And I just, I look at 45 minutes and I say, uh, you know, I don't think nothing good came out of that one. Uh, apparently there's rumors about, you know, Panarin giving them a deadline uh, till mid-September. Uh, we'll see what happens from now and then. Uh, but I do believe that uh, they're going to end up moving him. And obviously the Bruins are heavily rumored to be in on that. Again, it's all about what are you willing to give up if you're Don Sweeney and the Boston Bruins. I mean, Panarin's uh, one, of, one of the best players in the league since he came over. Over the last four years, I think he's amassed probably the fifth or sixth, or at least top ten, most points in the NHL. I haven't looked at the statistics in uh, quite a while, but I believe the last time I did look at him, um, he was like in the top, top ten for sure um, in the most points in the last few years in the NHL. And... I mean, he's a tremendous talent. There's no two ways about it. He plays the right wing. That's exactly the position that the Bruins are looking for to improve in. Um, obviously, we saw it in the playoffs. They, were, they lacked offense. It was um, the Patrice Bird draw line with Brad Marchand and um, David Pasternak. They, they were incredible, but nothing beyond. It was it was dried up beyond those guys. And Jake DeBrus came on strong. David Krejci was so-so, I thought. I mean, you look at the stat sheet and um, you think he did something out of this world. But uh, the eye test will tell you that he did not play that well. Uh, excuse me. Dry throat here. <laughs> but absolutely, I mean... They, they, they're they definitely missing a piece in the top six. And, you know, I think Panarin makes a lot, a lot of sense. But it's what you're willing to give up. Are you going to give up a player like Jake DeBrusque? Um, I say no. I think that's the type of player you keep if you're the Bruins. He has some old-fashioned Bruins element to his game. He's big. He's strong. He protects the puck. Um, he shows tremendous speed. Another topic I wanted to really touch on was uh, the Tory Krug situation. Um, there's a lot of speculation going on on whether the Boston Bruins are, you know, looking or exploring the possibility of trading him. There's a couple of variables in play here. 
Um, obviously, there's a log jam kind of building up there in the roster, especially uh, the signing of John Moore makes things a little bit more interesting. The resigning of Grizzlick as well. Um, I, I think also money comes into play. I think a lot of people are dismissing that aspect. I know he's making 5.25 right now on the cap, but in the next couple of years, I mean, the way the market is trending right now, um, you can see Krug demanding seven to eight million dollars a year. I can really see that, and that's a number that Boss is not going to touch. I mean, I think they're more focused on roster management and cap management at this point. They have a lot of young players coming through up to the system, and uh, a lot of a lot of them are knocking at the door uh, over the next couple of years or even sooner. Um, so I, I really think that's an interesting situation. And let me just make one thing clear. Um, if the Bruins or when the Bruins do trade Tory Krug, please let it be known it's not about the player. It's just like how I just said. Um, it's more about cap management, roster management. It has nothing to do with the player. He's a tremendous athlete, tremendous leader in the locker room, very popular in the locker room. Um, he's becoming one of those young vet core veterans on, on a team that you really look for, um, you know, where his leadership skills. Um, but the Bruins also had to realize that uh, with Grizzly Gris in the fold, there was, there was a little bit of uh, redundancy. I wouldn't say it's like for like redundancy. Obviously, uh, Krug's offensive game, it's a little bit further along at the NHL level. Not to say that Grizzly doesn't have that um, ability um, because he, he played great for BU and he was an offensive player for them. Will he get 50 points a year? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. But he does give you an element of stability back there in terms of defensive play. And despite being a small player like Krug, um, his defensive awareness, his position is a lot better. His quick ups are a lot better. He's a tremendous skater, superior skater to Tory Krug. Um, his advanced statistics are are, are better than Tory Krug's. Um, not to say that he's a better all around. He's a better player than Krug at this point. But uh, if you can. You can sacrifice 15 points a year to give you a more all-around play. I think that's something you have to consider, especially with the cap management situation moving forward with the Bruins. Um, you got Charlie McAvoy. You got Jake DeBrusque, Bjork. Um, you got a couple of guys, you know, coming up soon. It's um, it's imperative that uh, Boston and Sweeney um, pay attention to that and, you know, put the team ahead as a whole moving forward um, ahead of any individual players. Um, obviously, uh, they did a tremendous job with uh, tying up Pasternak and Bergeron. Um, I don't believe that um, Krug's camp will be looking for a home count for a hometown discount. I mean, they realize it too. I mean, uh, I, th- I believe Tory Krug, um, despite his tremendous offensive upside and and output, um, they know it too. I think they know that he's a fringe fourth D, and they're gonna try to cash in on you know, on his offensive explosion over the last three years uh, on D and try to cash in on that because that's where the market is dictating. The market is dictating seven to eight million right now for a player like Krug. Um, I think we just saw Matt Dumba um, get a uh, $6 million deal um, per year. Um, and I believe, and that's in a short, that's the, that's a shorter, um, sample um you're talking about krug who's uh, been pretty consistent over the last three or four years at the back end and pulling up putting up um significant numbers there so i think you you're looking at a different bracket for krug and uh, like i said i don't think boston touches that whatsoever I, they don't touch that number again not because of the player but because of cap management and cap uh, and roster management which is uh i think it's a uh, it's a great way to look at it, a great philosophy by swinging the boston bruins um, and things like this happen, you know, you, you can't keep everyone. Um, you know, I think they've done a tremendous job stockpiling their acts, their assets and, um, drafting and developing the right players, um, to fit their system. Um, if you look at, um, a lot of the players, they draft, they draft or they sign, uh, usually their background consists of, you know, captaincies and within their teams and high profile players in terms of leadership, um, so I think they have a great collective group of collective players that um, can fill the void um, at various positions um, moving forward. 
So I think the Bruins are all set. I don't think they'll take a step back if they do trade Krug. Um, we have to take a look at what they get back, right? I mean, we can't we can't judge the possible the perspective possibility of Boston is going to trade Krug and um, kind of lose our heads over without knowing what's coming back. But at the same tone, I mean, only because somebody's talking about trading Krug, it does not mean they're advocating for the guy to actually get traded. I think a lot of people realize um, the variables uh, that I just talked about a couple of minutes ago, um, you know, the log jam and the cap and all those sorts of things. I mean, but at the end of the day, Krug is a perfect fit for this team. Perfect fit. And um, but, you know, you have to make these hard decisions as you go along. And it's Don Sweeney's job to make those decisions for the Boston Bruins and the best interest of the Bruins. Um, I think I think he'll do the right thing. Um I believe that uh, if the trade is going to go down, I don't think it happens before the season. I give it a 50-50 chance. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. I think teams really want to see him in real live game situations, um, see how his uh, his ankle is, and kind of make a determination from there. Um, what are you looking at in terms of a package for um, Tory Krug? Um, do you do you leverage Tory Krug to get your top six winger, or do you kind of wait it out and see what you have internally with Bjork um, or other prospects or Zach Sinishin That you know, so, sometimes there's a couple of prospects that here and there surprise you in camp and kind of take hold of a position. So I mean, you never know that may force a different trade. Uh, perfect scenario would be if both Bjork and Zach Sinishin, um really turn heads um this this camp and now you find yourself okay where are we going to put back is do we trade back is now do we free up that money does that allow you keep, to keep krug and kind of get a better feel of where his agents are what his agents are thinking long term um in terms of money and cap um there's two years left on his deal so they they definitely can afford um keeping krug through this year and kind of re-exploring um this whole thing with tory uh next summer there's a couple of moving parts here that um, can put the Bruins in a different direction, uh, depending on what they decide to do. All right, guys, till next time. Thanks for listening. Um, I'll try to do as many podcasts as I can uh, referencing the Bruins. Um, I appreciate the support, guys. See ya. Welcome to Upside Down Pencils podcast, featuring Jesse Jimenez and Tommy Kimcham, covering everything New England. From fashion, sports, dining, and nightlife entertainment to community, small business, and education. Make sure to follow them on Twitter at Inspired Pencil and to visit their website at UpsideDownPencil.com for the latest news, updates, and upcoming events.